What I'm going to show you guys now is how to rig the, the three-way system that we use. Uh, the first thing you want to do is take a piece of braided line, which is the, the braid's going to be running to your rod and your reel. And what I usually do is I take and tie a basic Palomar knot onto the three-way swivel. When I get done with the three-way three swivel, I pull it through and I make a basic Palomar knot, cinch it down, cut my leader, or my length of my tag end off there, sorry guys, throw that part away, and then I've got one part of my three-way system hooked up. The next thing I do is go and clip my bobber on to the other part of the three-way swivel, and when I clip it on there, I leave the bobber open instead of putting the, the, the holes line of the uh, brass part of the bobber back into the holes, I, li I leave it open to give the, the fly more action or more a lot more action actually than it would be if it was if it was tightened on there. The next thing I do is I take a piece of fluorocarbon. Granted, I'm going to show you it in a lot smaller profile because we're doing it on a camera. I'm going to use a length of leader, roughly, Say we're going to pretend it's 12 feet long even though it's only two and what I do then is I tie a basic clinch knot. I wrap it six, seven, eight times. Through the tag in basic clinch knot, fisherman's knot, like we all learned when we were a kid. Slide it on to the, to the three-way, cinch it down, cut my tag end again, and there I've got a three-way system with the bobber ready to be fished. And if I run it out then, if I run typical length of my leader, I'm pretty much gonna say I started 11 feet today, pretending it's 11 feet, I take my fly, I tie it on there. A lot of times I'll just use a Palomar knot for this part just because it's quick and easy. Run it through, bring it through, make this Palomar, cinch it down, cut my tag in, my fly is already shaped into the bait fish. When I cast it out, I leave my bobber about a foot from the rod, bring it back, let the fly hit the water behind me cast through up to a bluff bank, to a point, anything that's got the depth to it that I know I want to fish. When I cast it out and, and I let the fly hit the water, the bobber's going to track, track down to the fly or the fly is going to track down. It's going to reach its apex and the bobber's going to lift up right. As I'm jiggling it and shaking it along with the, with the fly down below, it's working along. The fish comes up from underneath and grabs it. Typically he's going to take the bobber under very slowly, but there are times when he'll reach in there and he'll grab this bait and he'll take the weight off of it and he'll create what they call a lift bite or I call it just a tip over. It's the, the weight of the barbell will come off, it'll crash over and you've had a fish hit it. A lot of times guys that'll be your biggest fish, particularly on carters. Uh, this is the, this is the three-way system, Bob's Bobber, Punisher Lures highly recommends this technique. This is the way that uh, most of my customers and all of us guys around here that are pretty serious about it have decided this is ideally the best way to fish. I'm going to show you guys now a variety of the flies we sell here at the dugout and the ones that all of us guys fish. They're, they're really simple, handmade by, by people uh, in Tennessee and, and one guy by the name of Robbie who owns Red Rooster in Georgia here. Uh, my, my favorite choices for, for this fly is I, I tend to use colors that match bait fish that are really simple in the morning. I start with my darker colors. If you notice, I have a darker gray here that's got some little chartreuse in it. And I've also got a white with, with a chartreuse in it. As the morning progresses and the light sunlight gets brighter, I go from the darker gray to the lighter color. If I've got extreme stained water, I go to a royal blue or a dark, dark blue or something with the pink head that I've got here, this trout color they call it, which is, which is just a great color that we use in stained water, really cold stained water. Seems to work really well. Uh, the other flies that we use are uh, Robbie's Red Roosters. Red Rooster's got an extra wide gap hook in it and that's his little secret that he thinks seems to be the best thing going and, and all, most of the tournament anglers that are using them now tend to agree and I believe it it's definitely hooks the fish a little better. You do not have near the pull-offs that you have uh, with, with other flies. 
Uh, both flies are great. I use both flies. Uh, Robbie has colors that seem to really mimic more what spotted bass tend to eat, what we like to throw, which are more uh, your, more your brighter chartreuse with pinks, uh, solid white with some pink thread, anything like that. He's got many colors. He makes a perch color that's a really pretty color. It seems to work really, really, really well at Blue Ridge. He also makes uh, a summer shad color that that's, uh, looks really, really well. And then he's got a rainbow shad, which is a very bright color that a lot of guys are throwing. Unfortunately, I would show them to you, but I'm sold out because that's, that's how quick these things are going. Um, when you go to the tinsel fly like Punisher makes, uh, you'll see that it's, it's just bright and shiny. It looks like a shad dying off. We use it when there's a shad kill, which we've had in the last couple weeks with the extreme cold weather. This, uh, all these baits, I like to use the dope with, and I use it, uh, the fish dope, to shape these baits. Unless I have stained water like I do on these two bright, bright colors here, I just do the heads on those. And also, I use the duck feathers when I want to use a smaller bait fish, much smaller bait fish. Uh, your, your blue color over here tends to work just as well as the, as the white does when it's, those are actually brighter condition type colors. And they're just, all you're doing is, is trying to have something that stands out to the fish a little more. And a lot of it has to do with, with what you have confidence in throwing. Uh, but it, these, in a nutshell, this is what we use. We use the three-way bobber system, Bob's bobber, uh, Punisher fish dope. Red Rooster Flies, Punisher Flies, and a Spro Swivel, which is a good high quality swivel with a high pound test rating, and they're very free moving and don't tend to twist your line. What we've just shown you pretty much sums up what we do with the fly. Uh, we're gonna probably come out with some videos and show you how to actually do it on the water and, and fish the technique. I uh, just wanted to let you guys know that uh, there's a couple different rods we throw here. You can come see them at the dugout. There's the All Pro, there's the St. Croix. Those are our two most popular sellers. And also we use a, a good spinning reel, something that's just got a smooth drag on it. Doesn't have to be an extremely high dollar reel. We sell many different reels, anywhere from the, the $49 range up to $300. But there's great ways to start out. I've also got a great little combo that I sell uh, for about $90. It's just a, it's a, a Fluger uh, reel with a, a, uh, crappy, uh, or a uh, crappy trolling rod made by Eagle Claw, which works great for the float and fly technique. Great way for people to start out. Uh, and you guys can uh, come see us down here at the dugout and I'll be glad to talk to you about it because it's definitely my favorite wintertime technique. I really enjoy throwing it. I just enjoy as much talking about it as I do fishing.